All right, guys, we're back with another one. Today we're gonna to be discussing the differences between standard batteries in your RV, boat, marine applications, whatever it is, and a lithium battery. A lot of these lithium batteries are now coming marketed as drop-in replacements, um, which is true in some regard and not true in others. So we're gonna go into that and kind of explain the differences and how to make sure that you're getting your setup right for lithium so you're not having a bunch of nightmare situations that make you think that lithium is not all it's cracked up to be. Uh, lithium definitely is the way to go these days um, in terms of just storage uh, for the, the amount of weight and the amount of size that you're putting in that same footprint. The amount of storage you get is almost double and in some cases more than double, depending on what kind of battery you have and you're starting out with. Um, your standard lead acid battery takes a full charge is about 13.6 volts. When you reach 13.6 volts on a lead acid battery or an AGM battery, maybe a, a 0.1 or 0.2 volts higher than that. 12.8 is a resting voltage for these is a fully charged, but when it charges up, it charges to 13.6. However, on a lithium battery, most lithium cells will be charged to a maximum voltage of 14.6. So an entire volt higher. So the reason that's significant is because all of your charging systems in your RV or what your boat alternator is set to put out at or anything like that, any charging source you have when you're talking about lithium has to then be stepped up to at least a volt higher. So if you don't have that capability in your equipment, you're gonna have to start replacing things, which is why I say these aren't true drop-in replacements ever. Um, RV systems, they come with what's called a converter. Your converter is your battery charger that takes 120 volt power when you're running your generator or you're plugged into shore power. It takes that power, converts it down to 12 volt to charge your battery. So on a traditional lead acid battery, you're charging to 13.6 volts and you have a standard converter. So a standard converter here looks Silver in color, about the same. You'll find these usually in a, in a behind a pass-through wall or behind or underneath a fridge in an RV is typically where these are located. Um, and on here, if you read them, they will give you all of the specs. This puts the input voltage is between 105 and 130 volts AC. So it has a standard house outlet plug that you'd plug right into a, to your outlet. And then the output is landed to battery wires on this side that go down over to your battery or into your DC system that eventually ends up at your battery to then charge that system. So the input is 120 volts in America, that's what we use. The output is 13.6 volts of direct current. So 13.6 to charge one of these. If you apply 13.6 to a lithium battery, you're only gonna get between 60 and 80% charged at best, and it is going to take a long time to do that because essentially the higher voltage that you're running with a lithium battery is going to tell this converter that your battery is almost charged. So when it thinks your battery is almost charged, it steps down the amount of amperage that it's putting in for that charging source and it results in a way slower charge. So a standard converter is paired up with a lead acid or an AGM battery that charges up to a max voltage of 13.6 where conversely, a lithium battery requires 14.6 at its top charge, and it levels out down to about 13.6 is where its resting voltage sits when it's once it's fully charged and the charging source is taken away. So very similar in size, very similar in shape, color, everything else, right? These look essentially identical, but you need to pay attention to the output of this. So this converter is a lithium capable converter, same 120 volt input, same plug, house plug that you'd use. And this one has an output of 14.6 volts. That is the important part. So a lot of times people swap and just drop these in, lithium batteries into their RV, and then they run their generator when they think their battery is getting low and they are getting almost nothing in the charge with their standard converter that we just talked about because it's not equipped correctly with the correct output to fully charge a lithium battery. And then they start assuming that the lithium is dying all the time because it's not getting fully charged. And they assume that the lithium battery is to blame because that's the only piece they change, not understanding that it runs at a higher voltage and therefore needs a higher charging source. So make sure if you're doing that swap, keep in mind 
that you'll need a lithium compatible converter. Some converters that we're seeing in the newer RVs, the 2022s, 2023s and up, um, they actually come with a little button on it. One side of the button will say LA for lead acid. The other side of the, the switch will say LI. And it's just a little push button switch up or down. It's very tiny. You can almost not see it if you can miss it really easily. Um, so verify whether you have one that is capable or not and factor that into doing your lithium swap so you're not out there trying to charge it up with your generator and nothing's really happening because the voltage from your standard converter is not charging your lithium battery. We see that a lot. We get a lot of calls for that here. And that's usually the issue there is somebody swapped in lithium, didn't take all these other considerations into account, and now they're having poor system performance. Um, same thing goes if you have a, a solar system that's already intact and running, you need to make sure that your solar charge controller, there's a few different brands on the market that are pretty good. Um, Renogy is okay. We always use Victron. Victron is very... Um, user friendly in terms of their app. You can get on there and you can change the output settings to anything you want. Um, you can do a custom setting. So if your lithium battery requires a little bit different voltages um, per the manufacturer, you can make sure you look those specs up of your individual battery and you can change it to exactly what you want as output. So you can do that a lot easier on the Victron unit, but several have it. Some styles like these where they have a push button selector where you can go through and it'll show you whether you have it selected for a sealed battery, a gel battery, flooded, or LI is for lithium. So make sure that your controller for your solar system has the ability to charge lithium batteries. And if it does, once you perform the swap, you need to make sure that you select lithium so it charges at that higher voltage. That'll be another, another reason why people's solar systems are charging very slowly or their batteries throughout the day never receive a, a full charge is because the settings on their controller or their incompatible converter is not doing the job properly. So that's another thing to check there. For RVs that drive, uh, like motorhomes, Class C, Class A RVs, they always have a circuit that charges from the alternator of the truck part and charges not only the starting batteries to start the motor, but they have a circuit that runs back and usually connects into the house batteries as well. So your house batteries is what this would be changed out for. And that charging circuit has the capability of pulling a lot of amperage off of the alternator. Lithium batteries have a lower internal resistance than standard lead acid or AGM batteries. So the amount of current that they can demand for charging is a lot higher than your standard lead acid. So that's another thing to consider. You need to know the specs of your alternator, how many amps your alternator is rated for, and if it's not rated high enough, you need to install what's called a DC to DC charger. Victron makes another nice unit there. The DC to DC charger basically takes the input from your alternator charging circuit. It goes in and then it regulates that current to however many amps you wanna put out that's safe for your alternator. So uh, they have a 18 and a 30 amp DC to DC charger, I believe is what's available from Victron. So you run your wire from your charging source from your alternator into the input here, and then your output lands back to your battery circuit so that you can still remain charging from the alternator while you're driving the RV, but it will not allow you to pull an excessive amount of amperage that's going to cause your alternator to fail prematurely. So just another factor there that a lot of people don't know. They have a, a motor home and they just drop drop lead acids in there and then three or four months later they're wondering why their alternator went out then they replace it and three or four months later their alternator goes out so be aware of that uh, that can be another issue when switching to lithium for motorhomes or class c rvs the last thing we're going to talk about when you switch over to lithium is the ability to check your state of charge how full your battery is how full it's getting and if you're fully charging that battery there is almost no way to tell the traditional systems you see in an RV when you walk in, it has buttons for your tank levels, fresh water, gray water, black water, and then it usually has one for your batteries. You push the button on battery and it lights up. It has three or four lights and it says, oh, you're two thirds full. Those readings are based solely on voltage. Lead acid batteries, they have what's called voltage sag, 
when you place a heavy load on them, the voltage will drop as it's trying to put power out. And then when that load stops, that voltage will come back up. So in the same regard, as they die or as they start decreasing in their state of charge, that voltage slowly comes down as well. So you may start at 12.8 on a fully charged lead acid battery. And then as you used it through the night running your heater, your stereo, the kids are watching TV through an inverter, whatever it is, your water pump's kicking on and off, the heater's going, all that. That slowly drains your battery down and you might end up at 11.8, 12.1 at the end of the night. So in traditional lead acid batteries, you'll see that voltage sag, that voltage curve as it comes down. Lithium has a very flat voltage curve. They are not susceptible very much to that voltage sag and their total loss is point something, point something volts, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 volts coming down and you're almost dead on a, on a traditional lithium battery. So the way that lithium batteries are calculated, this one is a 100 amp hour battery and to make sure that you're using and utilizing all 100 amp hour but not going too far down in that state of charge without knowing it, using a voltage meter to do that is very hard to do. It's not reliable. You'll think you're at 30% when you might be at 60% and vice versa. You might see, oh, 13.3 when 13.6 was fully charged. 13.3 doesn't seem that bad. 13.3 can be anywhere from 70% to 20%. It just kind of depends on the usage. So to monitor your state of charge in a lithium battery, it is very highly encouraged. And I would borderline say it is completely necessary if you are not a super avid user of like voltage charts and things like that and you want a way easier way to just glance and take a look at your system and see where you're at you need to install what's called a shunt a shunt battery monitor this is another product that victron sells and it essentially you land all of your leads all of the things that you would land on your negative battery post you land on one side of the shunt and then you take a lead from the negative battery post and land it to the other side of the shunt. One side says to system minus, the other side says to battery minus. So the battery minus side comes off your negative post to there. Everything else lands on the other side. So a lot of, a lot of times we will install bus bars. So that there's multiple connections that you can land all of your trailer um, grounds to and then run one larger wire just to this side to make it easier and a more clean install. Um, so essentially what the shunt does is the shunt is regulating and seeing all current passing one way or the other, whether you're discharging from your battery and it's running out of your battery or your solar or converter is charging into the battery, it takes all of that into account and it's measuring it down to the milliamp of how many amps are flowing through that device so it can give you an exact state of charge. Um, so it calculates all that. You go in the settings and you tell it that you have 100 amp hours total or 200 amp hours, whatever size your battery bank is. And it now calculates that off of your state of charge. So it uses that input and then all of the outgoing loads and incoming charging sources and it sits there calculates that and spits out an exact state of charge number for you so you're no longer relying on the voltage reading of your panel or anything else inside uh, victron sells a smart shunt which is bluetooth only through their victron connect app and they also sell one called a bmv 712 the BMV has a, a screen that physically plugs into the shunt and with a comm cord and runs inside your RV somewhere and you can mount the screen. The screen itself puts out the same Bluetooth signal that the smart shunt has. So you get that stronger signal inside your RV. You can still see all the same things that you can see, but now you also have the optional screen. If you don't have your phone on you while you're camping, you can just push through the different up and down buttons and go through all the screens to see how much amperage you're using, how much time you have left until your batteries are dead. It gives you all that information, very accurate and a very good tool. We don't install lithium batteries in anyone's rig unless they agree for the charge of putting in this device because we got too many calls when we first started installing lithium of people coming 
and calling us and saying everything's dead and they don't understand why they've been charging all day. All these things are going on and it's very hard to figure out where your state of charge is. So they were thinking they were fully charged when maybe they were really only getting halfway charged throughout the day and then their batteries are dying at night as a result of that. So the shunt is a must have in, in, in our world. Um, we don't install them unless they agree to put in a shunt. Um, just because it causes so many problems and so many headaches in the system later on if you don't have an accurate state of charge number. So to recap, converter, your solar controller, and a DC to DC charger. If you have a motorhome or something that charges from an alternator, you need to make sure all of those are compatible. And you need to install that DC to DC charger if you have that alternator charging circuit to protect your alternator. And then for battery monitoring, if you don't have a Bluetooth battery, you need to install a shunt. So take those things into consideration before you do your lithium battery swap. And hopefully this uh, keeps you guys out of getting into some kind of situation where you're having a real headache and can't charge your batteries properly. If you have any questions or want to see any videos on anything else that I explained or how to change those settings, leave it in the comments and we'll get to it as soon as we can. Thanks.